madlymedia.com. Beautiful. <laughs> right. And pick your seat. And yeah, that is wonderful. Okay, guys. Uh, just uh, pick it up where you're at. Bantering, talking about the old days. Uh, Walt, oh. uh, it, it's hard to believe. I guess it was 35 years ago that we stopped roller derby. <laughs> 50 years ago, this started on Channel 2 in Oakland, and uh, in 2008, it'll be 50 years. Um, but I remember some of the things that just seemed impossible, that you would cut some commercials in, in Oakland, and I remember the first time we had a game at Keele Auditorium in St. Louis and went in there, and the Post-Dispatch, the paper, sent their editor in, and he sat down and he turned around and he said, where did all these people come from? It was sold out, it was 10,000 people. He said, you know, we never even had a story or an ad in the paper. And I think they should have realized at that point uh, what roller derby and what television was doing. And we were really the first to use television. We used it successfully. Matter of fact, I tried, it took me a couple of years to get the Giants baseball to do a telephone call in on the, for tickets. I really tried for a couple of years with general manager of the Giants and I finally convinced him to do it and the business manager of the Giants told him one day, he said, boy, you're lucky you didn't get a commission on this. They never realized and it was all because I was just following what you did on Roller Derby. Well, Frank DeFord, uh, who you know, mm -hmm. the best sports writer in America, maybe the best writer. Last time I saw Frank, we sat together at a St. Louis baseball game in the press box. Oh. Anyway, he, uh, he has just come out with a book called The Entitled, which is about the spoiled uh, athlete who thinks they can do anything. Um, and he, as a matter of fact, uh, has said it's based on A-Rod, it's based on uh, Kobe, it's based on uh, our very own Barry Bonds, you know, the, just the attitude. Um, our kids, you know, that was never much around that, uh, and if, uh, our kids are roller derby skaters. But of course, what people don't realize in those days, tickets were one, two, and three dollars. And they say, well, you, you never paid them enough. Well, we never got enough, you know, and as you know, it was kind of a mm -hmm. hand-to-mouth operation. But so, highly successful. Yeah. Oh, many years, many, many years. And uh, the amazing thing is, of course, you've you have uh, done the narration, the opening for this m musical roller derby, which will be in New York starting September 20 20th. Well, I would give the ticket information if I had it, but I don't, <laughs> just like the old days. And uh, uh, Frank DeFord and his wife were coming. He said he had to see it. But then, then the other thing is that none of us ever thought about was the fact that how would roller derby come back if it ever came back? And it's kind of come back as a street sport with all the roller girls. Now, here's something you probably don't know. Today, around the world, there are 230 leagues from Australia through the United States and Canada to Scotland to Hungary to Romania to Germany. Um, and it's all based on what going on the internet and seeing some of your old games and they've taken it and a lot of them are skating just on the flat surface um, but and they're doing it for fun and they take crazy names and everything but uh, uh, they support their own leagues they each pay 40 to 100 dollars a month to do it they all have other jobs and it's just really become amazing and I met a lot of the women they're they're really a hoot but I tell you uh, I often think about the times that we spent together you know every Sunday oh. night at Keys Art Pavilion yeah. where was Keys Art Pavilion Golden Gate Park <laughs> in San Francisco and uh, it's as I say it's been 35 years since the last time we did that but uh, you're looking chipper, and uh, well, and uh, we both are in the era of survival. <laughs> I could probably give Frank DeFord some stories on entitlement <laughs> in other sports, but uh, roller derby was never that way. It was never high hat. The skaters no. were human, right? Got along well with them, but baseball was entirely different yeah. animal. They all figured the world owes them a living, and that was it. Anyway, it's great to be here with you. It reminds me of Madison Square Garden. Oh, God. When we used to sell it out right. weeks in advance, always in Madison Square Garden. And how did the crowd greet you when you walked in and they saw who you were? 
they, I have run into people. We we did a game New Year's Day in New York, right? And I went down there New Year's Eve to the Madison Square Garden, the area, and watched the ball come down as it did. And people were coming up to me in the crowd. Yeah. to talk about roller derby yeah channel 9 WOR we were on every Sunday morning from 10 to 11 a.m. they had 1 million viewers per week I mean couldn't be a worse station well, and a worse time there was a uh, salesman at channel 2 that he and his wife owned a, a small shop somewhere in Half Moon Bay or the area and he was on a buying trip in Seoul Korea and he said he went into his hotel room turned on the TV and there I was and there was roller derby <laughs> in Seoul, Korea. Probably pirated, but we don't know. <laughs> well, you were all over the world then. Yeah, I know, but uh, that is so funny. You know, it's, it's wonderful. And uh, the funny thing is, what we're doing right now will be heard and seen all over the world. You don't know who downloads now into this In Seoul, podcast. Korea? It, yeah, I think <laughs> in Seoul, Korea. In fact, uh, Jim Donnelly, who's... Uh, We've got uh, MadPod as well as a bunch of other sites. Uh, we'll be able to tell where these viewer listeners will come from. It's amazing. Oh, can we have him do a, a liner like we mentioned? Mad, MadlyMedia.com? Oh, have him do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what? MadlyMedia.com. Beautiful.